Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big shit. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official, Mr. Maker. What's going on? No, 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 on the each and every video in the description section, there is a link. Click the link and follow the instructions, and we thank you in advance. We love you. Man, hey, man, we got a special guest in here today, y'all. He don't need no introduction, man. This yes, guy I right do. here. No, he <laughs> don't need no introduction. This brother here, I seen him on stage, live on stage, man. Pipe of the comedians in the building. That's right. What's going on, man? Hey, man, I'm what's going on. I'm here. I'm man, here. I thank you so up. much, man. Building. Thank you for having me, brother. Man, man love really the comedians, you. man. Some about this platform and the comedians. I didn't even expect to be doing a bunch of comedians when I started this. <laughs> and all of a sudden, God said, no, you doing comedians. And that's the way it I went. Feel your soul, I was, brother. I was no doing laughter. rappers at first. No, it's too much commotion, man. <laughs> too much commotion. Too many problems. <laughs> comedy is good for your soul, brother. You got to do the comedy, man. And stick to it. Yeah, and, and you and look younger since you Man. <laughs> That, that rap got that gray in your beard. That's what didn't happen. Oh, yeah, man, I got to leave this rap alone, man. I got to get younger, man. Say, man, the rap Comedy. thing, man, it was different, man, because with y'all, man, you know, you know, y'all getting y'all up front on every show, man. These guys right here, they have to build it up, and it's a lot to go with it. Y'all, you know, they'll at least get y'all fifty dollars when y'all first. Start. I heard right. Steve Harvey say, "I got fifty dollars to drive over there." I'm right? Like, okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's crap. get to it. Yes, sir. So you were born and raised in Louisiana. Baton Rouge, Louisiana. To be Baton exact. Rouge. That's right. I don't hear that Shout deep, deep, deep accent that the New Orleans Baton Rouge people have. Because I've been gone for so long. I left Baton Rouge in 1989. How old were you then? I was 18. Oh, okay. So I left Baton but Rouge. But you still grown enough to yeah. try to hold on to that accent? I couldn't. I tried to. You, you tried know, to. But you know, yeah, the, girl, but you know the girls me. love that yeah, New Orleans I was, accent. I, I could turn it on and off, you heard me? <laughs> you know? Being from down there, yeah. But anyway, yeah, I left Baton Rouge and went to the United States Navy. Oh, and, okay. Uh, so yeah. were you... Um, Living with your parents when you were living in Baton Rouge? Uh, absolutely. Mom I and dad? Mom and dad, yeah. I wasn't living on the bridge, yeah. I I, I'm just checking yeah. because a lot of You never people, know, you're right. Because you know the statistics is always as like the single parent, single yes, parent yeah. household and stuff like that. So you were blessed. Yes, very blessed. And I don't, I don't take it for granted. So. That's good, that's good. But, uh, yeah. Siblings? I have a brother. Older, younger? Twin. No, you are Believe not a not, twin. Fraternal twin, not identical. For yes, real? Yes, I'm a twin. Oh, wow. And I have an older brother that passed away, but it was three of us. Oh, okay. So it's crazy. I, it's three of us, three boys, and all of us had one girl. So my mom got all, all three boy. girls. Wow. Yeah, so that's, that's crazy. So how was it growing up with all boys? Y'all were just rough fighting all the time, that's arguing all, I know. all the time? I'm, I can't compare it to nothing else, so that's all I know. I mean, growing up with my brothers, you know, of course, we used to fight, but that's just, you know, typical upbringing, you know. I think you're my first twin on here. I don't good. think we've ever had an See? interview somebody that was a twin. Yeah, you just never know. You know, it's a lot about me you don't know, but we're going to get to it, you know. How was it like growing up being a twin? Again, were you the, were you the, because they always have, because I have twins in my family. You well, always have a, a bad one and a good one. Well, Who was the bad course, one? Uh, I'm the good one because I'm here with y'all. So <laughs> but yeah, uh, actually, um, and I'm a, I'm the oldest. By five Bye. minutes. So I was out Ooh, here living that a long? life. Yeah, five I was minutes? out here doing my thing, and then he came along. I'm like, hey man, come on, I'm gonna show you, how, show you the ropes. So, but uh, I don't have nothing, you know, not, nothing to compare it to when it come to mm -hmm. how I was it growing up as a twin. All I know is y'all couldn't read him dressed alike. You know, when we was little. Could you read each other's mind? Not really, not really. But I can feel when he's not feeling good. Or oh, I you can you can. Feel, yes, I can know when he getting in trouble. I kind of know, and. I guess, I don't know, I just, that come with being a twin, that's what I was. Even if you're far apart, like. Even right now, he's still in Louisiana, and I'm here. And you can feel it. I can feel it. I and you're never mom, wrong. What's going on with him? She wow. Said, oh, yeah, he's in the hospital, he's been locked up or whatever. So I can kind of feel what, you, you can feel it. So that's true. Yeah. I've always heard something like that, but I just didn't know if that was for real. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that's, that's real. Okay. That is absolutely real. Wow, man, you know, you, man, you, you, you you got an extraordinary story, man. I mean, just talking a little bit beforehand. Mm -hmm. We, I mean, you when you how, when did you know you was gonna go into the military? To the, na the navy. Well, my dad was a 
pioneer, man. He was actually in the Jet Magazine as Man of the Year. He was helped engineer your Freon and air conditioned refrigeration. So he oh. had his own mm. business for 55 years. So mm. my dad had always been old my whole life. So he waited late to have kids, and we his only kids. Wow. How old was he? When 50 he had, something. When he had so y'all? He, yes. He, so when he died in 08, he was 90. So, you so had my dad had been old my whole life. Wow. wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he was in the Army. And, of course, that was before I was born. He used to tell me different stories. So he told me the only two things you can do, go to college, go to the military. And I knew I wanted a school guy. I wanted a dummy, but I just wanted a guy I like to study. Mm-hmm. Music was my first passion. I had a scholarship to go to Jackson State, Southern, Grambling, uh, Baylor School of Music. And you Texas didn't go. Southern. Didn't know how good I was. Didn't really have nobody really push me. And... Were you I singing said, hey, or playing Trumpeteer. That trumpeteer. was my music, yeah. So I read. I was reading music, play a little keyboard, but I love music, love the way it's arranged. I can listen to harmony, melody, alto, sax. I mean, I, I, I love anything dealing with music. I love it. Saxophone, piano, trombone, tuba, I do it all. That's my thing. That's my background. You still do it now? Not really, but I just love music, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but moving forward, I said, well, I'm not going to do the school thing. I'm going to go ahead and go to the military. Mm-hmm. And here I am. Wow. So, but he, if he told y'all that, I mean, he told your twin that. Did your twin go to the My military? My twin went before I did. Oh. He went to the Navy. He did. We didn't do the buddy program because, I don't know, at that time, it was something going on with, uh, they couldn't let us in at the same time because of testing or something. Anyway, mm-hmm. boo, he went in maybe a month before I did. Okay. So he went to the same boot camp. He used to write me back then, you know, you writing letters. Mm-hmm. And he said, you're going you know, to be all right, but the first couple of weeks, you're going to be wondering what the hell you got yourself into. <laughs> and he kind of told me, kind of, you know, embraced me for you. it. Right. I had to get in shape, do the push-ups and all that stuff. So when I went, I was, I was halfway there already mentally. Mm-hmm. So I had, you know, a slight advantage of knowing the ins and outs and knowing what was, you know, what was ahead of me. Mm-hmm. Wow. So he went in for a little while. He was an aviation electrician. My brother was so smart. Mm-hmm. Still, well, still smart. And um, so I went in as what they call it, mess management special, which basically is a cook. Mm-hmm. But you, you still go to culinary school and still teach all them things. And at that age, you're thinking, man, I don't want to. Now, I think it. I, I just appreciate the opportunity that I had that the Navy gave me, trained me to do what I do. And I ended up using that for my job later. Wow. Well, is the cook that's the easiest job? No, no, no. Why you say it like that? It's not easy. Why? Because is- you, I was on an aircraft carrier, mm-hmm. fifty five hundred people. So no, ain't nothing easy about that because now I'm doing mass production when it comes to preparing food. So now wow. I'm cooking for fifty five hundred people. We had like seven kitchens on board. So now we up. We had two shifts, and when you out at sea, you don't have days off. It's twelve on, twelve off. So you 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 work in twelve hours. You off 12 hours. Now, if you're not hitting a port and you out at sea for 70 days, then you're working for 70 days straight. Mm. And a lot of people don't know that. Ain't no overtime. It's just what it is. But it taught you endurance. It taught you that dedication and that you have to be, you know, you, you, it's, it's all mental. Mental. You know? So if you're not mentally there, man, it'll drive you crazy. Mm. So I did a tour of, of the Mediterranean back in 1990. 91. Eight months gone. We left, I was stationed in Mayport, Florida. Went to boot camp in San Diego from one coast to another. Never heard of Jacksonville, Florida. That's right, right there on the, co- you know, right there on the coast of, of Florida, northeast. Man, I get there, I'm like, what the hell am I getting myself into? But I still thank the Lord every day for that experience that I went through. Thank the Navy for sending me through such rigorous uh, training. And it, it helped mold you as a man because the military can make you or can break you. And it made me. And eight years later, I got out and doing you know, beautiful things. So Wow. We had a, a, I remember the minister that we had on old Bullet. Mm-hmm. His daddy was a serial rapist and he was in the Navy. Wow. And they was hiding it. Mm. They was that, moving that, him around. That was some years ago, I'm sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. He had, until they finally couldn't. Yep, yeah, but. They finally he caught him to him. Got him. Yeah. And because they, they, they do, um, just like the police, you always hear that they do defend their own, right? Yeah, yeah. that blue code. Yeah. That's the blue code. Yes, yeah. and, that, and that's what it is. But Sad, at the end but. of the day, he, he definitely, um, you know, he needed help, you know, and he ended up ended up bumping his head at one of the new cities they went to. But his son never got over it. He still, as a minister, I know in Atlanta when we interviewed him, it was tough, you know, because wow. he still go through it buying that. You wow. Know, his spirit, he got to let it go, though, like I told him. Can't and that was hold on dad, to it. You say? Yeah. Wow. He's still living, or? 
I don't know if his dad still living. I know, you know, Bullet oh, is, yeah, but yeah. I know he was locked up. What? So, well, you know, doing something like but that. But it, it, it just, man, you know, so you went in, did you expect to retire? Yes. And I ended up medically retiring out of the military. Okay. How so long I, was you in? Eight years. Eight years? Yes. Why medically? So, because I developed asthma while I was in. Oh. And anything that happened to you while you're in, and it's, it's called yeah. service connected, then they're going to make sure that you know, you're, you're good. Retire. Yes. So right. That's wow. what ended up happening. Wow. And so now you, when you get out, you end up um, d still working for the state. The government. The government. Yes. And what's a, the beauty about it is that if you work for most government entities, they'll let you combine the service. Yeah. So I had the eight years in Navy, and with this job that I got with the, you know, with the um, federal law enforcement, I can buy those years. That's awesome. So if I did 25 with the law enforcement, tack on that eight. Mm -hmm. You pay for it. It wasn't much, but they let you. So now it's 33 years. Wow. Mm -hmm. And that's what I ended up with. Retirement. Retirement. Yes. Man, so that's crazy. Yes. When did you know that you was, like, funny? Well, <laughs> all my life I've always, always been a clown. You know, always been, you know, and I got to thank my mom. She's the one that has a sense of humor. My daddy was always serious. Serious. My mama was at balance, and she's yeah. the one that's go in. You talk to her right now, man. She had y'all on. The, don't even know y'all, and just start telling you different stories. It's just funny, you know. Yeah. As a person, so she was younger. Sense of humor. Yes, of course. She, my mom was twenty two. She had me. So wow. Oh, and that was fifty. He twice yeah. her age. Got you know. Got some of that chocolate and just couldn't, <laughs> you know. And here I am, you know. That's so. um I guess, man, I just I just had the personality to make people laugh. You know, people say I can feel your speed. You always just funny, always outgoing, always positive. But knowing that, when did I know I can just be funny? I, I don't, I can't say a time or a date or just period of my life. When I just known that I've always been that guy that just moved the crowd. So when people finally saw me doing this for a profession, they said, "Man, I knew you was always funny," and that's always always here when us guys from the navy always you know find out. What's crazy, I was in Virginia Beach with nephew Tommy, and a guy was in the audience I was stationed with in Pensacola, Florida. Mm. He said, man, I knew you was going to make it. I knew you was always funny. He knew and it. I get that all the time. I go different mm. places, and I might see a guy I was stationed with or somebody I know from my hometown or whatever. And they, man, we never knew that you was actually doing it, but we knew you was always funny. Wow. So, so my okay. sense of humor comes from my, my family. Mm -hmm. funny. Piper, we always funny. But when you think about it, like, you had to have that... Moment where you went on stage and and that's another story. they booed the heck out of you. That's another story. Let's talk about that when they when they when they uh but that didn't happen. Bomb when he bombed. He said that, that didn't that happen. Not my first time. But I got, when I got a miraculous story that a lot of people let's talk believe. about. Nineteen ninety five, maybe ninety six. Station in Pensacola. Bernie Mac had just started his "I Ain't Scared of You" tour. That's when the Death Jam. Yeah, yeah, was coming, yeah. Right. So at the time. I knew he was coming, so I, I was a fan. I always been a fan of comedy, but I had never been on stage. I listened to the Richard Pryor's, the Red Fox, the Bill Cosby's. Growing up, back then it was record players. You know, we were listening. Mom didn't listen. They ain't there laughing. But she's a fan of comedy, so she used to buy the records. And my brother, we back there listening and eat popcorn and act like, you know, it was our party. But I knew growing up that that's something that I really, just really liked. So Bernie Mac was coming in town. I had bought tickets. Now, he had just started popping. He hadn't did nothing major just yet, but Def Jam put him on another level. So he had to start his own tour. It's called I Ain't Scared of You. Then that was his first yeah, little, yeah. first comedy bit, his tagline. So back then, it wasn't, of course, cell phones. And the way you promote was what, feet on the ground, putting the flyers on the yeah, windshield, mm -hmm. and and going to different clubs and putting them on your doors. And I, I met the guy who was promoting the show. His name was Cheyenne, guy out of New York. Brooklyn, New York, to be exact. He was in town promoting Bernie's show. The show was the next day. So he was coming the day before. The show had sold out 4,800 people. Mm. Right? He putting the flyers on the car, and he put one on mine. I'm leaving the club. I'm by myself. I'm just leaving the club. So me and him just got to talking. This had to be fake, man. Me and this guy just started talking. I said, man, I said, why are you putting that flyer on my car? Man, I don't even know you. So I'm joking with him. He said, man, my bad, man. I'm just trying to promote the show, man. You know, and introduce yourself. Hey, you know, I'm shy, man. Hey, man, I'm doing this show tomorrow with Bernie. I said, man, I bought tickets to the show, man. He said, yeah, man, it's going to be fun. So now I got him laughing. For some reason, I don't know why he just, me and him just started joking. Me and him just started going back and forth. Some of my head asked me to ask him, who you got opening up tomorrow? 
You serious? I just, I'm telling you, this is a true story. Who you got open up for you tomorrow? You be like, I ain't got nobody. Just the radio personality was gonna bring him out, and we just going. I said, man, I can open up. He said, for real? I said, yeah. He said, well, I'm telling you right now, I ain't got no money. I said, don't you worry about no money. Just let me give you an opportunity. He said, write your number down. Well, my number down. He said, I'm going to call you in the morning. Not me, I'm thinking he playing. He said, no, I'm going to call you. I said, all right. Next morning, phone ring. It. He going to call me at 8.35. I said, remember, look at that door. At the clock, I said, damn, he's calling me. I answered the phone. What's no call ID? Hey, what's up, brother Cheyenne? <gasps> I said, Lord, I took my foot in my mouth. He said, man, you ready? I said, ready for what? Come on, man, don't play. You know you want to open up. I said, man, I, okay, I guess. So now I'm thinking to myself, I took my foot in my mouth. Mm -hmm. Now I got to follow through. I'm nervous. You got to find some jokes, everything. Was you I nervous? Had material, man. You were nervous, what? were you? I'm nervous in R. Kelly in court, man. I was nervous. What was you going by? It wasn't Piper the comedian then. It was just Piper. Because that's the military, your last name. they go by your last name. Yeah. yeah. You know, so Piper was my name. And it's a catchy name. Yeah, it mm -hmm. is. Man. He called me, so I told him, I said, okay, let's do it. He said, I'm going to come pick you up about 12 o'clock. Vernon flights get in about 12.30. Pick him up from the airport. We all go eat lunch, get something to eat, and then I'll meet you at the venue later on. He just kind of giving me a itinerary for the day. I said, cool, come get me. Come pick me up, guy, man. I was just in the van like this, just looking at his face like, what have I got myself into? What am I going to do? So we get Bernie. From the airport. Come closer to the mic. Oh, mm -hmm. so we get burning from the airport. First thing Bernie do is get in the car. He looking at me and looking at the promoter like, who is this, you know, who is this dude? Who is this motherfucker? That's how you talk. That's how you. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> I'm looking at him like, all right, I'm Piper. How you doing, brother? You're like, I'm doing all right. <laughs> I'm going to let you know. Don't see my motherfucking jokes. Like that. That's how he was talking to him. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, man. So now I'm talking shit back to him. And that's how I mean him going back and forth. Yeah. Real cool dude. He's I'm sick of him trying to see my jokes. <laughs> Do your own motherfucking joke. I said, man, you don't even know me. I know, motherfucker. I ain't trying to know you. He said, I'm just fucking with you, man. Like that. <laughs> so now I'm just like, all right, man, you had me. He said, nah, man, we're going to have a good time tonight. He said, I don't really know you. So we asked the guy who he was, and we introduced each other, and then we talked, and everything was cool. We go eat. I can't really eat. I'm just sitting there like still nervous. nervous. Still looking at him. I'm starstruck. I'm like, wow, this dude was on TV. Well, he a comedian, whatever. Get back, man, to the, um, take him back to the house. At that time, I tell my wife, I say, hey, look, you man, you ain't going to believe this. And I hadn't told her nothing. She said, you ain't going to believe this. I said, I'm going to be open up to show them. Them two tickets that, I, that we bought, give them to one of your girls. She was like, what? She said, you lying? I said, yeah, I'm going to be on stage tonight, so. Check out your boy. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I do. You know, yeah, yeah. You know, how you pull that out? Don't worry about it. Get out of my business. What I need you to do, get that ticket away and just give it to your home, you know, one of your homies. Yeah, because we about to go. She down. worked at a hair shop. So she in there running up. Oh, he's going to be on the stage tonight. This is about five o'clock. Oh, he's going to be on the stage tonight. Y'all need to come check him out. Da, 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 da. Man, about the show started by 8, 8 30. So I, he told me to be there by seven. I pull up the line around the corner. <laughs> Now I'm really, I'm tight cheek. Now I'm like, oh, should I even go in? And what I, I don't know what. So I kept telling him, keep going. Just keep going. Don't stop. And you still didn't write any jokes down. Not one. Moving forward. I get in the dressing room. First, I, when I got to the door, my name was on the door. Huh? The dude had to put my name on a little piece of paper, Viper. So now it's real. This, this is, this is this real. Is, it's this going is, down. This is my first time on stage, bro. I've never been shy. And opening for Bernie Mac of all Bur people. Uh, who can tell the story like who can say they first time on stage with somebody that like that that's famous to that crowd? Right. That's crazy. right. You know what I mean? Ain't nothing but God. Nothing had to be his fate, man, that I'm here today to be doing comedy. This is how it started. The lady coming there who's hosting the show, she asking me a question now. She's speaking Spanish to me because I don't know none of this lingo. She's speaking English, but she's speaking Spanish because mm -hmm. I don't understand what you're saying. Yeah. About what you've been on, give me your credits. I'm like, credit, my credit, all right, I got seven, <laughs> 17. I mean, I, she said, no, just tell me what you've been on, basically. I want to hear you like nothing. your resume, what I've been on, shit. Parole, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm joking with her. She's like, no, silly, tell me. I said, well, you can just say I'm a local guy, military. At the time, I was in the Navy. And she's like, okay, I just introduced you. I'll make up. I said, all right, just, you know, I said, tell him something. You know, I'm kind of nervous, you know. Yeah. I'm like, Bernie Mac, gonna play a club. What'd you tell him? What'd you tell him? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that's how it's something transpire. <laughs> so, man, I'm back there. I'm going, and I'm, I'm, I'm in a chair just like this. I'm twisting. I'm doing like this. I'm like, what I'm gonna say? What I'm gonna say? What I'm gonna say? Now I can hear the people. I can hear the crowd. They got music playing, DJ getting everything. It's getting ready. It's getting ready. I'm the first guy. Yeah. 
it had like a little curtain where you can kind of look. Cause I, you went, you know, I left, yeah, left out the Ooh, dressing I room and put, went out I and peeked. Said, it's gonna make you more nervous. Here's the story. Call my name. Going to the stage, y'all, Piper. They, of course, nobody knew I was, but they still gave me like, like he, yeah, he here. When I hit that stage, boss talk, all the nervousness went away. Uh-uh. The jokes came to me like that. First My time. First joke, I still remember. I said, "Y'all give it up for Cheyenne Production. This guy came way from New York to bring Brandon McDonald here to this country ass town, right?" Y'all don't get that much black entertainment. Stop. Y'all trying to act bougie. Y'all, the last black dude y'all had down here was Charlie Pride. I don't do that. <laughs> and they, and I had them. I grabbed them. You grabbed and them. And I kept going. Quick. Talking about stealing food out the buffet. Talking about when you get a whooping. How when you be in the bed, you be crying. You, you cuss your mama out your mind. All this came to my head. And my set might have been 10, 15 minutes. Because you're talking about life. You're talking about the experience. And one girl tried. Now, nah, I got stuck. I, I kind of ran out. And I was kind of mumbling. And I, I didn't know which which way to go? And the girl tried to heck on me. That was my savior. I said, I got him. So she said, she stood up. You ain't funny. Get your ass off the stage, yada, yada. Now, mind you, I'm on the big ass stage, the spotlight, so I couldn't see her. She was so in the back. I could hear her, but I couldn't see her. And I just, something came to my head. I said, sit your fat ass down. I said, the only reason why you probably hear this show because it's close to the first of the month. When I said that, they, oh, woo, woo, woo. You're way up there having ass. I'm out of here. <laughs> and that was it. And had an ovation. That was it. That's when my career took. Now I can say my career took off, but that's, that's when I started, started on that stage. Wow! Now, second show. Wait, but I want to go back. What did Bernie Mac say about? You did a great job. I still got the little five by eight, but he wrote, "You done a great job." With his told, picture, because back then when there was, that was that, it wasn't you, you called. Kept it. Was getting, I got it. Of course, you. Sure of course. What did your wife say? His ex wife. This was his first wife. I know that, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. At the time, it was, oh my God, you know, you've always been fine. Never know. And she didn't never, nobody never knew because I didn't tell nobody I was doing it. Right. It yeah. just, you know, impromptu. And all that came to him. And all that came to him. Second, what how, happened? How long were you on stage for, though? 10, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. 10 minutes, 15 yeah. Maybe, okay. of course, I don't It seemed you, long Because oh, when you're up there, it seems forever. Yes. And I guess for my first time, that experience was like, I'm thinking that I've made it now. now not made it, but now I'm a comedian. <laughs> you know, you can't, you know, I'm answering the phone different. You know, <laughs> hello, hello, baby, get this call. I can't really talk to nobody today. You know, I'm really you Hollywood. You're right. Oh, I'm what? One show, 10 minutes, now I'm a comedian. So basically, I done changed one time, now I'm a mechanic. No, yeah. that ain't how it works. <laughs> you got to really study this craft. A guy came up to me. That's what really made me think. I had a manager. What? Yeah. I had a whole manager. <laughs> I had a manager after my first 10 minutes of fame. I had a whole manager. The guy came to me and said, I want to manage you. Um, I'm going to put you on some shows. And, bro, we, we going places. And you just said yes. LA. And I'm saying, yeah, of course. I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm, I'm that guy. <laughs> what you think? What, I mean, I mean, right. right. You see? Right. right. I'm gonna tell, I mean, shit, I need you to pay me. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> now, he done put me on this, this nice little club. He done... Put them flyers. Now, I'm new to all the media stuff with the flyers. He putting out all the different. He promoted. Bible. He got posters on the on the light poles and the oh, road road. Road. oh man, I'm all over the city. Prince Cole ain't so big. Yeah, yeah. Man, I go to the grocery store. Oh, you the guy with Bernie Mac. You the guy with Bernie Mac. We you so take a picture. I'm thinking I'm what? You killing it. Man, you can't touch me with 10 football. <laughs> what? I'm that dude, man. <laughs> what? Fool with me, you cool with me. Come on with it. Come on now. Oh, man, what happened look. next? Next show, Because I know bro. something coming up. Oh, it's coming. <laughs> he put me at this club. Packed it out. They coming to see Piper. All my Navy buddies coming. At the time, my wife was having people from the shop. She had posters in there. They coming to see Piper. Look at me. They got to come, come see They got to come see me. Now, my, I still ain't wrote nine jokes down. I was just wondering. I you? ain't prepared myself for this. I am bug naked. I don't have nothing. And are you going to do a 10 minute this time? Or are you I, doing no, longer? I'm going to do a hit. This is 30 minutes. You're doing that whole time. Hold on. I need an opener. <laughs> what you doing? What's wrong with you? People <laughs> we calling me, man. Can I open for you? Let me see. Let me let me get some video or something. Show me something. Show me something. I don't know what you got. Yeah. I don't even know you. I don't know you got to do comedy. Not at all. You a real comedian? You know, I'm, I'm screening folks. You know, I'm not, I'm not, showing out. I'm, I need a resume. I need to see your resume. <laughs> Tell me something. What's your credits? Right. What's your credits? <laughs> what you been on? <laughs> Other than getting on my nerves, you know. Yeah. So, man, that's second show. I might have had two people come in and do a five minutes set. Right. So I'm backstage. They coming back there. 
They done got my little wall. They got my yeah. old dog. Yeah. Yeah. Set up. How can I? How can I help, man? I, uh, could you uh, close that door, please? I don't want to talk to nobody right now. <laughs> I'm not doing interviews right now. So after the show, maybe I'll take a picture. It's gonna cost you. <laughs> man, that second shot bombed so bad. Al Qaeda looking for me, man. What a terrible! Did you oh my god! I was I thought I was in Kuwait. It was bad. So what you said, bro? Gunpowder residue everywhere. Get out! Oh of my days. god! Bombing with a suspicious package. They I no fly list. Nothing. Get out! Bro, terrible. Didn't have no material. You ran out of stuff to ran say. Ran out. I didn't even ran out. I ain't had nothing to start with. I'm but how you, you going out something you never mean, had? You the, I you was just rambling. Just again, I didn't prepare. Wow. I didn't prepare. And that's, I think, what you got nowadays. These people don't prepare, and they see other people doing it. Look easy. Mm-hmm. Comedy's not easy. How did you, how, who who did you look to help you to understand how to even write? My guy named Ray Ray out of Mobile, Alabama. Bless his soul. Shout out Ray Ray. Shout out Ray Ray. How did you find Bless him? Bless his soul. He found me. He found How me. long after that, the time you bombed till um, that time? Doing, but just stop saying bomb. It's kind of hitting my <laughs> Cause you sound like you bomb. No, don't say it so with a so much of a beat. Bomb. No, I stumbled. Okay. But all seriousness, um, some kind of way I can't remember how I met him. But he was a radio personality. I'm mm-hmm. um, 93 BLX, Mobile, Alabama. Now him and Ricky Smiley was real, real cool. Okay, Ray Ray. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he ended up passing away. Yeah, that's his R. 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 Peter Ray Ray. He actually was. You remember that guy named Jamarcus Russell played Ellis? That was his nephew. Wow. Mm. So he helped manage him. The Oakland Raiders drafted him. Yeah. Ray Ray was a comedian, but that was his nephew. Dang. He's from because Jamal Cross was from Mobile. Oh, Mobile. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's where he was from. But you. But Pensacola Mobile is right there. They're not far. So I ended up meeting Ray Ray. And Ray Ray pulled me on his wing and showed me, hey, man, you got to start. Because he saw me on the show and I was okay. Oh, he was there? Yeah, he saw me. Not on that show. But he saw me. No, he wasn't there. He He's, probably wouldn't have called me that. I probably wouldn't have met him. He was, he, you got to wait. You just kept going, I though. just kept doing it. Okay. And they kept booking me because they, they, they saw the potential, but they knew. That I wasn't no real comedian. And you kept headlining? No, no. <laughs> I'm not ready for that. Just you, didn't, no. you didn't headline no, no more. No, after more that. You had more no more headlining. No, no. I kept that. my head out you of that line. I did not want to do that again. <laughs> respect for the craft. So I kept doing it. And I finally met Ray Ray. He told me, man, look, man, you got to start writing stuff down. Start, you know, you can be funny, but you got to know how to set the joke up, get your punchline, facial expression, do uh, stage presence, know how to. Work your light. Know know your crowd, cause your set can't work for every crowd. You gotta, but all this gonna come in time. You're not gonna learn that overnight. That's with anything. You don't mm-hmm. study the crowd. I'm sure you guys it didn't take this overnight for you guys nah, to build nah. this platform nah. that you have. This boss talk didn't happen overnight. Mm-mm. It come with support. It come with hard work and dedication. And it do pay off. Now look at what you have. look at what you're That's doing. God. But when you first started, it wasn't that easy. Mm-hmm. Same with comedy. Same with anything you put your mind to, put heart. And your soul into it, it's gonna take some time with anything. Wow. You 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 gotta understand, man, when you got in there, man, and you knew when did you know that I killed it and I wrote it and it was good? Maybe three years in. Three years mm, in. That three long. years in when I kinda like, okay, I got something. I did it. I did it. Hard part out the way getting on stage. I could be anybody getting on stage, bombing or not. You on that stage and you trying to work them and you I give you credit. It's gonna come. Now, sometimes people just ain't fun. I don't care how long you do it. You just that just ain't your change. You can do it for ten years. You still suck. That just ain't your calling. I get it. But mostly, people that's dedicated to the craft and and you study it and you go and do these open mics and you really put the time in, it's gonna pay off. Wow. So three years in, pretty much, I kind of knew. Killed. Okay, I got to keep it going. Then I stopped for a little while. Why? I just stopped because life was happening, going through things with my ex-wife. She wasn't supportive. And it just, and little do people know, men and women know, if you have a spouse, the support means everything. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't care how good you are. If you, if you, you know, caring for somebody, you love somebody, and that, that second half is not doing their part as far as support, and really, it can diminish your confidence, it can diminish you moving forward, you don't really have the effort, to, you know, the, the confidence to do it. So I kind of shot away from it. Still was doing it here and there, but not like I really wanted to. But Stop. when you were chasing your dreams at that point, were you, um, did you have another job or you were doing? I was the, the military. So okay. it wasn't like, that's okay. all I was doing. Okay, so, so you're still making money. Passion. So it's yeah. not like, it's so not like the money wasn't, wasn't coming like, in. I got to keep, you know, no, right. no, no. So that was okay. my way of, you know, 
of getting out of it like I didn't really have to be in it. It was something I loved doing. Right. But it wasn't a pressure of I have to do it. Okay. You know, so got out the military and started working with the U.S. Department of Justice, you know, federal prison system. And when I was working there, I really wasn't doing it. But I was in Kentucky, so that I wasn't no way I could really do it. I moved to Texas in 2000, November of 2000, right? Shout out to my boy Ray Ray, Joel Ronalds. Man. He was doing the open mic, 2003 or four. I want to say. He'd open mic over here at this place off of off of Camp Wisdom, I want to say. That, was, that, right across that ain't where Steve Harvin was there. It, no, it was further down. Further down. Yeah, I forget. It was a little spot right behind that hair, the chicken place, Hall's Chicken. Oh, and man. And it was a little club right behind that. Okay. He was an open mic because he was on K104, but yeah. then that and all them. Yeah, and then that and, uh, and Jumbo. Yeah, Jumbo. That's my yeah, guy. Yeah. yeah, Joe, shout out. So he had open mic, but I was listening to it on the radio. I said, I'm going to go. I, and it, something just hit me, say, just go try it. I, I, I think I called K104, called somebody. They said, well, yeah, you got to be up at a certain time and put your name on the list and you can. I said, okay. Mind you, I'm still not knowing how this, this comedy thing works in this area. Mm-hmm. I said, I'm just going to try it and see whatever. I went up there one night. And again, I had wrote a few things down. Few jokes I was writing, I still was kind of, and I went up there and I killed. Yeah. Oh, I killed. This is my first time almost, you know, getting back into this comedy. Yeah. yeah. I killed. So I said, well, okay, I'm still uncomfortable. I said, well, let me, let me see if I'm really in front, of, in front of a different crowd. So I think I went to another club at Open Mic. I killed. I said, okay, now I'm finna just go ahead first and see what it do. Junebug said, hey, man, Nene Lee doing a Fat Tuesday over at Improv. I didn't know what Improv was. I didn't know, you know, he was like, yeah, man, she doing it. I'm gonna get you on. I'm gonna get you know. Have you do you know, do a set? So he told her about me. I went up there, kill, kill, and she was doing every other two. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, I Pat, remember that. I remember and that. Every comedian in the city wanted. It's people from all over was yeah, coming for that. Yeah, and then they yeah. Had to, she had to see she the had it going down. Oh man, it was I remember popping. that. Shout out to Nene Lee. She was giving me, you know, yeah. she was giving me man. Always give me props on the radio, and uh, I started doing that every other week. She was doing it every other week, and I made sure I was there. I was leaving work. Flying up 635, trying I'm to get, go there, get there. it. And I was building a fan base at the time. Yeah, people know my name. Yeah. Now I'm knowing all the different comedians around here. Shout out to my boy Sid, man. And, and uh, you know, with Black Ron, all these different guys. Well, Black Ron wasn't back then. He was. He wasn't know, there. Yeah, either. he looked younger than me. He wasn't doing it back then. But these are all the comedians that I ended up meeting while I was here. The did you Did you run into Steve guys. Harvey because he was here? I wasn't here. No, he went in 2000. Oh, he, he had left already. Yeah, he had left already. Yeah, he had left already. That's when him and Chucky Ducky quack quack. Quack quack. Shout out to Chucky Ducky. That's my guy. Yeah. Shout out to all these guys, man, local. It's a lot of talent right here in Dallas, man. Yeah, he been on here with Chucky Ducky. Oh, yeah. A lot of talent in Dallas, man. Absolutely. I got a question. So after, okay, Bernie Mac, that started out great. Yes. So. And you've been working. Who was the next big artist or comedian that you actually um, featured for after all of that? Well, to be honest, or open I for? I've opened for a lot of people. Cedric Entertainer, D.L. Hughley. Um, at the time, T.P. Hearns was popping. Um, I, I, it's so many that I just opened up for them and never developed a relationship with any of them guys. That's what I was wondering. Just being on the stage. Okay. You get an opportunity in time. People know I'm funny, but never really build a relationship with nobody that's, that's real famous. Is it hard to do that? Not really. You just got to be, I think, the right place at the right time. And then, yeah. you know, nowadays it ain't hard because you got social media. You're going to know where they're going to, you know, you know where they'll be at. You can kind of mm-hmm. finagle your way through. If you know somebody, introduce you to them or whatever. But I never really just got close to anybody of, of the. Did you ever see Bernie man. Mac again, ever? Never. Let me ask wow. you this. Uh, Bernie Mac was joking with you, but there's a lot of guys that come on here, since I'm in the comedian world now, that tells uh, me the story of how some of the comedians will tell them before they go out there, or, hey, man, uh, don't use these jokes or that joke. Yes. Has that happened to you before? Never. never. Knock on wood. That's never. I've heard the stories. Really? Never. Never had that. Mm-hmm. Never but yours is different, or... too, though. You different, man. Yeah, and I, I, I thank you. I, I hear that a lot, that no, I am it, different. Nobody you know? can do what you do as far as the way you do it. You yes, know, and the delivery. Of course, and you the delivery, but the way you, it, that that uh, Bernie Mac impression, is it's on it's on five, <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah, and I've done it before, man, a couple of my skits. You know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I get it. I, I, I do it sometimes, most of the time. But, but starting um, out, did you ever have to... Um, I'm not going to say steal, but use somebody else's jokes in, in the beginning. No. Because, because I know a lot of people you, do that. Yeah, they, 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 I think they do it, don't know no better, you know. Mm. But I never had the urge of, well, let me try to. 
Because I know people that heard it. If I'm, if I'm doing a joke and I know that I'm stealing it from somebody that's big, people that's that's coming to comedy shows are comedy fans, obviously. So mm-hmm. you're going to hear that. But now I, have, I never had the urge to steal no jokes to, to try to get laughed. Have anybody ever stole your jokes? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm at the show. I can hear you. At least wait till I go to the bathroom. Oh, you they know, do it at your show? They've done it before. Show? Not saying a whole lot of times, but it, it, yeah, it, it, it happened. Did you ever have to address anybody yes. on it? You do? Yes. You, respectfully so. Because I think sometimes when people do that, giving them credit, they probably didn't stole it and had it for so long they forgot they stole it and <laughs> probably forgot they where they heard it from. You might not even see me on stage. Somebody else probably stole it and you got it and pulled it. And that happens. You didn't got the joke so long till you don't even know where you got it from. So I give people credit on that. I don't Wow. I don't know. But yeah, you address it. Hey, man. Because when I went to the person, I said, hey, man, you know, I mean, he did it verbatim. Mm. So it wasn't no switching it up. You had to hear that from me. Uh, some, there's no way you wrote that. What did he say? He just said, man, I, you know, nothing. Babe. I'm, what, I mean, what can you say? He could, so he, I had to actually send him footage. Okay. And say, hey, this is YouTube. Like, bro, this is, I was in Houston Improv. This is the same joke. And it stated time and everything. everything. He said, oh, okay, well, my bad. My, I'll take it out my... Oh, you don't say. You won't take it out. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. You know? Say, yeah, so. man. That's crazy. Yeah. So I, I want to ask you about, like, you know, today's time. You came in up in a time when <clears throat> you had to hit it, boots on the ground, flowers. You just yes. explained all that. Emotion, yeah. and, and, and it was a different time than today. To, in today's society, you have the Desi Banks, the Funny Marcos, the... Uh, Chee Nas Myrons in the country Wayne's just that they come up off of the internet a based. whole different way okay exactly. and, and and but they graduate into doing on stage comedy yes but they start off doing skits right. like um, when you look at those two worlds like how do you look at their comedy versus the way that you guys started out doing it to me comedy is comedy no matter how you start off if you can deliver on that stage and you can put out you know, some good quality work and people like your content, they like what you're doing, it, it, you know, it is what it is. Certain comedians have issues with it because how they went about it. It's a tool that we all can use. They just took advantage of it and maximized the opportunity. Now, from what I heard, a few of them had, a, you know, a stumble with the transition from doing skits to the stage. No, they do. They do. Yes, they have, and they'll tell you. They do. And you have to respect the craft. I didn't come up doing the skits and straight on the stage. That's all I know. But with these guys, they maximize the opportunity to gain a fan base, which is smart. Now I'm going to transition to the stage. I'm going to eventually get it. Y'all going to be patient with me. I'm going to get it. And a lot of these guys got it now. So mm-hmm. I look at it like, hey, I'll knock your hustle. Just yeah. respect the craft and know that it's just not easy. When we talked to uh, Alex Thomas, he said that he was he understood that they do their skits, but being funny for five minutes is not being funny for a whole set. Right. Mm-hmm. And exactly. the, the comedian, Al, you know Alex Thomas? Yeah, too? I just did a show with him at the Improv. Yeah, yeah, and he, he was yeah. just, he, he said that, but it wasn't it wasn't in no demeanor way. He was just saying, if you're going to do it, you're going to have to bring it. And you got to work at it. Yeah, you got to work this at it for sure. something new to you too. You, yeah. know, you coming yeah. from skids, like yeah. you transition to the stage, and a few of them had some issues, but now, hey man, I got to respect this damn stage. Oh and no I, no! They they and tell they me. I heard say, "Hey man, I, man, this is whoo," but they got it. Yeah, you know, like you talking about the country Wayne. Look at Netflix, dude. He got it. I mean, yeah. Well, the Netflix special. Um, Did you watch it? I'm saying, y'all watch it. I mean, it's comedy, but it's it's subjective. Why why do I have to say he was okay on Netflix or he was okay on the stage? Why why do it matter where he was at? If you liked his comedy, you liked it. If yeah. you don't, you don't. Everybody ain't gonna like me. It's just what it is. That come with doing comedy. So us as comedians want to be in his position as the Netflix or the, you know, these Showtimes, all these different specials. You want to be where he's at to say if you like this comedy or not, that's your opinion. I went to uh, his show in Houston and he he fills that room up. Them people come and in the seat. He has a fan base. It was like 36. Asses in a seat. 3,600 seats filled. <laughs> at the end bottom. of the day, it's a, this is a business. Yeah. yeah, asses in the seats. That's what it's about. People saying that, you know, he ain't funny. Ain't about the funny when it comes to this. It's about the money. So he's funny money. enough to get the money. He to got get them right. And you can't not. How can, how can you knock the hustle? That's Me real. being as a comedian, he's a he's a brother, a frat. He, uh, we consider fraternity in this. We together. I'm gonna uplift you. However you got there, you there. Yeah, yeah. Whether you took twenty or thirty or six thirty five, you got to the same destination. You yeah. getting there? Where we all trying to get there? Trying to get there. 
So, have you ever uh, done any skits? No. Do you think you would ever get into that lane? Maybe, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't close the door, no. You see what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. that's a lane that's open so it, at, to you just yeah, like it is to them. Yeah, but I'm just of a different mindset. I really ain't got time to do it. Not trying to make excuses, but... That's, and that's work. It is work. Say, that ain't no, it did. is work. Well, so I commend them guys for doing they that. You got to keep that content going. The and you can make a lot of money from it, you too. absolutely I'm right. So ain't nobody built on, like, Country Wayne built hills. He, man, that man is he's grind. a mastermind he, when it comes to building them skits. You got to give him that, man. The only thing I always, I've been saying lately is... I wish he would do uh, Buddy and uh, when he, on his stand up, Buddy and Drip, mm-hmm. the people who they oh, see. Oh, the characters, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Because you know, know Billy Billy Jay, no, he, he don't. He don't, he don't, he don't, he don't, he don't do eventually. That's what yeah, I'm thinking. I'm thinking that's them. the breakthrough because when I had Carlos Miller on here, he was like, why would I go and do what they do when I do what I do? Hey, I'm just going to go up there and do my skits or whatever I do and go home because that's what they come to see. Exactly. It makes sense. That's exactly. So Carlos, but Carlos, I seen Carlos do stand. I seen him do both. Yeah, but I know the skit thing. I see him go up there with him, DC Young Fly, and Chico Bean. Oh, that's his and, little. And they all group. just yeah, they, they do, just, they, they do what they do off each other, and they don't even do it like nobody else that you see. That's why I say everybody had their own lane. Eighty five South Boys doing their thing. They doing their thing. But comedy has changed, I think, because Absolutely especially since the internet era came in, people doing comedy a totally different way compared to the. The the um, traditional comedians. That, that goes with anything that we're doing in life now. Music has changed. Yeah, how it used to be. People playing actual instruments, not it's people changed. actually singing, not using voice. So music, everything is evolving to a whole different. You got artificial intelligence now making music. You got all kind. Everything's changing. Everything gonna change. But I when I when I interviewed Faison, Faison told me about the fact of. What he said makes sense too, though. He said he was on the stage with Bernie Mac. He was on the stage with Jamie Foxx. You had to bring it. Yes. Like, it's not the same level as what they do in comedy as right now. That's, he says when you look at, he named uh, Fluffy and them filling up arenas. Yes. He ain't talking about yes. filling up no dang yes. regular set. I saw he that talk, interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's on Boss Talk. Yeah. He, he talking about this. You got to bring it, brother. Yes. Like, he, Absolutely. there's levels. He said yes. Dave Chappelle level is not the same as any of you know these yeah so Kevin Hart and all of them got, yeah Kevin they, Hart everybody got they you know doing their thing so it's enough right here for everybody what Piper doing what I'm doing yeah but Faison doing what he doing everybody doing what they do you maximize your opportunity now skits come along I'm more than happy to do it but I know it's work it's creative content. it ain't no you got right you got people can't, you, all this stuff to be successful you yeah if you're gonna do it do it, let's do it right now I'm gonna tell you uh, uh, Country Wayne just used one iPhone and I get it but That's he got it, it. But he, he, this dude but I Chase. promise you got a Chase. team Just Chase Chase, you gotta, Chase a sure bad boy I'm sure you got a team though Oh it's a bunch of yeah. them But Chase is the one With that damn And I get it I'm not <laughs> saying all of this I was just saying just, You got to have it together You got to you know, know what you're doing, doing it. Yeah, You, you got to know, know, right. know what you're doing To make it right To make it right And he been doing it right And so. I had I had Jesse McDonald's In here the other day Yeah, Jesse, Jesse was just yeah. here And he, he was saying I remember we did a skit in here mm-hmm. And he say Make sure whoever talking Put it out He knew he already knew what need to be done. He telling us at the that's time right. how it had to be done. He's that's that's they practiced it so much. It's a it's He's actual doing it. art to it. That's right. And that's he right. knows that art. You got to know what you're doing. He like when that person talk, go to that person. Don't go. He like don't stay on me. Always go to the one who talking. I ain't know nothing about simple, what he was saying. That I'm like, what the hell are you talking sense. about? <laughs> if you look at a skit, that's yeah. exactly what. If you talking, you. Yeah, of course he know what he's doing. Yeah, you done yeah, it. He done a lot. Twice, oh, he, oh, he, he, he done he, it before. Else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll be like, man, what is you doing? But yeah. shout out to Jesse, man. That's yeah. my oh, guy, yeah, Jesse man. McDonald. Yeah, my guy. You ever Arkansas. seen him do a stand up? I work with him. The boy can do it. Oh, he good. <laughs> no, trust me, man. Don't look at it. Don't look at them two sticks. Don't think I'm going to take it. 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 I'm going to He's strong. He's going to tear it down. He's going to go hard he as anybody else. Jesse, man. Shout out to Jesse McDonald, man. <laughs> Arkansas. Yeah, my guy, man. He's going to get there, goddammit. Man. He's going to take one of them sticks and he's going to take one of them <laughs> You got the weapons, but leave that boy alone. Man, so, so give me top um, three comedians of all time, dead or alive. Dead or alive. Your top three. My top three. Richard Pryor. Mm-hmm. Lord. Number one. Storyteller, actor. Um, Paved the way. All just, exactly. Richard Pryor, man. Number two. Um, And he's not in particular order, too. Mm-hmm. Um, greatest of all time. I'm going to say Bernie because... I I couldn't do three. I do at least four. No, no three, I, three, I can't three, do three. Yeah, three. 
We shutting it down. And I didn't have enough of burning. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Burning that gave you a whole. He yeah. gave you what he gave you. Don't get me wrong. Well, he Burnin killed that king of comedy. Kid, he gave, but I never really had a special. Never really had, you know. Right. You see his content now from King's Comedy Tour because he, you know, you know, he put it out, but he didn't it never just gave you a whole bunch of kind of like a lot of these com- you know, comedians do. So I say, uh, Richard, Bernie, and the and the genius of George Carlin. Okay. Mm-hmm. He was so smart, just intelligent, the way he, his words and how he delivered them jokes. It's almost like he's just having a conversation, but he's hitting you in your gut at the same time. He's telling you, hey, it's a bit about having stuff. Everybody got a lot of stuff, and you got to take this stuff to move it over here just because you can go buy more stuff. He was always just this guy that just make you think about what he's saying, and it's, it's reality. So George Carlin, man, that's... Wow, mm-hmm. man! You ever you have you ever have so many? I didn't want to narrow it down. To mm-hmm. No, yeah, so many. Man. It's a I bunch. Of Chappelle and man, them boys different, man. Yeah, them boys different. Yeah. Said, a, said a beast, said, man. man. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, for me, the King of Comedy, it was said and Bernie Mac. Yeah. yeah, the said and Bernie Mac That's show. Hey, man. But everybody got their opinion, though. You, it's right? subjective. You like what you like. Know what I'm? My analogy I use when I say that. I hate liver. Can't stand it, but they're still selling it. I don't like it either. Me and you on the same. I, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you made my point. Yeah, I don't like I don't, it. They still selling every day. Chilling. They make. They make it. Every I day. don't like that. Uh-uh. But they. I bet you go around here to Fiesta. I bet it's yeah. in that red bucket. And they buy them. They buy them. Got them right there buying it. Man, so buy what you like, man. So I mean, you you you've come so far, man, and did so many things, man. Like when you, what is what is the ultimate goal for you? What would you like to see, like in in your walk? You know the way you've been doing this. How comedy? how how I move and what keep my mental state when it comes to this game. I'm not. I don't have a goal. Wow. It's wherever it takes me. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, I'm just gonna get in this car and I'm just gonna drive. I ain't got no destination, but if I end up somewhere. Where I don't expect to be, it's gonna. It's a blessing, and that's what I pray. Just put me in position. What city showed you the most love? Birmingham, Alabama. They like you down there. I love, love. Birmingham. Do you go to that Green Chicken over there? That chicken. I ain't never heard of it. What? Green Acres. Green Acres. Green. No, never heard of it. Man, you got to go to Green Acres. I haven't been to Birmingham that many times, but to, just to say, like the city. It's a lot of people show me where, love. That's where uh, Ricky Smiley from, ain't it? Yeah, he from Birmingham. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I Shout time. out to Ricky Smiley, you know. Yeah, yeah. I interviewed down there. Yes. I interviewed down Birmingham, there downtown man. where the foot soldiers be at. Okay, the yeah, Star I, Dome. Man. Yeah. That's the, that, that comedy club. is. They like, showed you love. They, bro, I'd have been there twice. When I tell you, bro, it is. Shout out to my man, Beanie Mac, right there in in uh, Birmingham doing his thing, man. Uh, the Star Dome is the epitome. So you know when you club. go, you feel good. I love it, bro. It just makes you, the way it's set up, it's almost like a stadium. You go in there, man, and the people come for comedy. They didn't know me, but they filled it up. They ain't, I don't think they really big yeah, on like the names. Yeah, down there, they're not big on the names. And who They come to, to support the comedy. They coming. The boat, the first time I was there with Bubba Dub. Shout out my boy, Bubba Dub. What? That's Bubba my Dub. boy, That's man. Right. He was the first guy that you like what man, I gotta ask you about Bubba Dub, man. Dude, dude, Bubba my little first brother, take, man. man. My Bubba little brother. Bro- first up. take doing his thing. Cutting up. And he humble, bro. Very He's the most humblest young man, Very bro. I know. Humble. Shout out to my boy Bubba Dub. We just did the improv in Houston, sold it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. Did that two yeah. nights. We did a yeah. Sunday, man. I came in from doing the show with my nephew Tommy Virginia. I literally was on a plane flying in. I didn't get to Houston just till seven o'clock. I had to change in the car. Bubba Dub called him. I said, I'm coming, brother. I ain't gonna fail you. I'm coming. And uh, shout out to my guy, man. He uh, sold that thing out, man. Two shows on a Sunday night, and good dude, man. He's my little young brother in the well, game. He come he, from he the internet, killing. but he's a real comedian. That nigga bad, ain't he, man? Cold, I man. know. That I be trying to don't t- put I, in with the guy. Told, he do hey, he listen, do his kiss, but he different. that nigga different, different on that stage. Oh, he different. And I told Fazo, and I said, you gotta, you gotta he go different. meet Bubba Dub. Bro. And guess what? I said, you got to meet he Bubba Dub. He want me to feature for him because he know my energy. He come he right know behind it. me, goddamn in the slam. He gonna come. He gonna come with it. Him, he come right with it. <laughs> you understand? Know like, go out and do your thing. He been come he with one of the ones. Do it. He said, "Man, do you? I'm just gonna come and do me." Ooh, that and that's his come. attitude. And he gonna come and kill it. That <laughs> he ain't never disappoint. That's my guy. Man, what's and sometimes fun? Sometimes he asks, you know, for you know, any advice or pipe. What you think about this? And that? Yeah. He don't ask much, but we he don't really talk much. He got him. Nah, he quiet. quiet. 
But you get on that stage, I get him. A whole nother person. Man, he learning his groove. And he every time he get better and better. Every time I see him, he getting better. Comfortable, he doing it. So he ain't doing the transition from the skits. This dude got it. He got it. He got it. He can give you a four to five hours. He just special, ain't he? Straight. Straight through, no hit. He ain't gonna miss. It's some hit. people just spent. He, got, he it. got Not only do he got it, it like he do it old school. I'm not gonna lie to and you. And he comfortable. You hear what I just said? Yeah, he old school. This nigga old come song, out there like he, he ain't gonna what he 18 something. Yeah, not young. <laughs> That's my guy, young dude, man. But he got it old soul. Just you know, he got it. Man, and some people have, some people don't. But have you seen one anybody pick up on it like that fast? Just come mm -mm. with it. Mm -mm. He, not like that because I, I just met him last year. Yeah, good guy, and I feel like I've been knowing him for years. But he's a real good dude. But He's one of the ones that just just came along like wow man like came from nowhere I never but he been doing it for a while like, yeah people don't know that but Dub been like this for a minute yeah at least yeah. five six years yeah probably more so he one of them guys man just a special you know just a special craft man this dude got it wow yeah. man I, I gotta ask you this question personality and everything Not personality yeah no. man he humble ain't dude and all very that. humble and, dude and his state right? and his, and look where he at he can be Hollywood. He could, he could oh, be. he could turn up. Yeah, he could be Hollywood. Man, but like, he ain't letting that get, you know. No, you know, anytime I pick the phone up and call that man, what? he go like, Unc, what, what you need, Unc, whatever and you need. Balance, <laughs> he's stable. Yeah, man, he man. ain't all that. He just we did, regular guy. We man. went to New Orleans dude. together, me and him. We, yeah. I, I just went down there because he was down there. That's right. Just we hanging out. Absolutely, bro. Just go to support, man. That's I'm right. going to but support But that's what I guy. do. I be in relationships. I'm not going to just be... You know, um, on a show and just and if I see you a good guy, hey man, what's and I'm not gonna that's call you do a show. Hey man, how you doing? Yeah, that's it. That's it. How you doing? Yeah, but the shows all that's gonna come. But yeah, how, how are you? How your mental health? How you? Yeah, what health? them bad kids? But, yeah, that's what I'm. What at. you got going on later on? <laughs> come, come, come get something to eat, man. Let's go hang out. That's it. And that's just how I am. You that's know? it. That's it. That's real. Yeah, and a lot of promoters that I've met along my career, I don't just do shows with them just to. You know, just as okay, I got my money now. You ain't gonna see me no more. I call him after the show, man. I appreciate you. That's I don't, right. I don't take this for granted. You could have had any other comedian. You call me. He called you. You got a list of people you can call. So I don't take that for granted. So I call him, hey man. I'm just want to thank you. So maybe a couple months later, hey man, how you doing? First thing they say, man, I ain't got no show. I didn't call you for no show. Mm -hmm. I see how you doing. Show gonna come. I ain't calling because I'm broke. I'm calling to see how you doing. Wow. Because Are if you good, then I'm good. Are you? What about the you, most actors or, or most comedians I see get into the acting world? Yes. Um, have you ever thought about doing that, or have you been, been in, in any movie? Yes. The, give me the names of the uh, movies. It's a movie that I filmed here called Paradise House. You can see it on okay. uh, Amazon. You can see it on different. Uh, I think it's on. I want to say Prime Video, but I've done that. Um, I've done my own special on Prime Video. How did you How did you enjoy doing it? Like like with the acting part. It's hard. It's work. It. I ain't say hard, but it's work. It, it look easy, but it's, you got to really you know study and know your lines, and it's an art form, man. It's, yeah. it's just like anything else. Yeah, um, but it's fun. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. You, you see know, people like, like Kevin Hart and them who that's and that's another it. special Bro, guy. Let me that tell can you just, something. Get I it. can watch this movie over and over and over again. My wife see me do it all the time. I can sit there and I will watch and laugh at the same joke over and over and, and over that, again. And you like it? You like it stand up? I like, like the way. I, no, I like his movies better. better than than okay, you. but I, I I like his stand up. But yes, I like he, your stand up. Absolutely, it's a difference. Like I'm just you, being real, and that's real. I met Kevin. Okay, right? I don't know you probably going. You can see it. He did what they called the heart of the city. You heard that? Yeah. Me and Black Ron was on. Yeah. Me and Black yeah. Ron and, and Kidlana Spiller. Did you yeah. watch that show? Uh-uh. I'm going to go we watch it now. We filmed it right there at the Black Academy Arts and Letters. In that muse upstairs. How was room. it? Wonderful experience. Shout out to my boy, Joey Wells. Joey okay. Wells is Kevin Hart right here, man. That's okay. the guy that does all his hosting when he's on tour. Yeah. So Joey Wells came up with this concept called Heart of the City. Basically, it's going around all the different cities, getting the comedians that hadn't had the big limelight I had, wow. you know, the, the he, big he, break. And I'm going to give these guys the opportunity to get a, a TV credit. Wow. And Comedy Central picked it up, and they had three seasons. And what they do is um, go to different cities, and they audition you. And they audition maybe 55, 60 people right here in Dallas. They only pick three. Right? Okay. They pick three comedians out of 55, 60. Okay. And... Three nights of audition, they had Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night. You pick a certain certain night, you audition. So I'm thinking, like, wow, they don't, out of 60 comedians, all these people come from all over. So they only had like five different cities. I think they did Dallas, they did uh, New Orleans, they did Baltimore, I think they did Sacramento, 
St. Louis. They only did like six cities, but three comedians out of each city. And they, I got the call. And 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 you, Me, you killed Blake Ron and Kilana Spiller. What Shout did, out to what, all of them. What did you? What did anything? What did Kevin Hart say to you that stuck with you? On that video, man. If you watching the video, people was asking him like advice. What kind of advice can you give a young comedian? And things that you have to do to be successful. He said, just stay at it. When you're on the stage, know how to hold your microphone. Little things. Record yourself. Look at yourself on TV. Know how you look at position. He's just giving you these little perks. But when you interview me, he said, I can tell you polish. And so I'm giving the Bernard Mac story. He didn't get the fuck. And if you can watch it right down. Wow. Right down. Oh, I'm no. going to watch yeah, it. Yeah, you can watch it. So he's just more of a, a, he's a good guy too. Just down the earth. He, he can be that Hollywood. I'm sure he probably is sometimes. But for the most part, didn't feel no uneasy. Didn't feel no None of this, I'm this and I'm that. Just, hey, man, y'all come in, y'all. Hey, man. Because we had to film the show. He couldn't make the show. So Joy Wells, shout out to my man Joy Wells, filmed it here. And then what they did was made us put on our outfit that we had on the show and they flew us to Hollywood wow. to do the interview. Yeah. And every city was in there and he had props for like Texas had a big, everything do big in Texas. And then he had St. Louis, certain stuff. And Baltimore, he had everybody props in this little big, big ass studio we was in. And he filmed it and we talked to him. And then he kind of showed the show clip, stuff like that. It was it was great experience, bro. Wow. Well, great experience. Man, man, that's that's crazy, man. But you you've had you man enjoyed this show, man, for real, man. Dope stories, man. How can people get a hold of you if they're trying to reach out? At Piper the Comedian. You can uh hit me on social media. That's Instagram, Piper the Comedian, Facebook. Email me at Piper the Comedian at Yahoo. And that's where you contact me anytime. We talked about Last weekend, then we didn't talk about. Mm -mm. Last weekend, but Charleston. Oh, <laughs> that was last. That was a few nights ago. That was yeah. no damn last weekend. That you, was last weekend. That was that the was weekend just passed. Two mm -hmm. days ago, nigga. Saturday. Y'all, yeah, yeah, you still, you still, you, did you take off running? See, no. Ah! You, you know how many phone calls I got. You know what? I like to forgot that boy. I know thank you, did. you so much. I know man, you did because you was there that night. I was on the show. I literally was on the show. What city was it in again? Cro uh, Crockett, Texas. That's about two and a half hours away from here. 45 mm -hmm. South going towards Houston. And Madisonville, so you, Centerville. Yeah. And so you telling me that you was the one that was out there. Did you, was you into it? Was you fighting too? What, what, what I'm fighting about? I don't know. Ain't mad at me. No. I ain't. I did what I, I'm supposed to do. I but, went out there. What, what, you, were, you wasn't inside the venue. Was I, was, I was in the, you I, was, I wasn't in on the stage or in where they was. I was in the, in what did you think of when you, when you heard about it? What they said, get out of here. They, it's no, going it down. wasn't. It, to, 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 to clear the air, it wasn't a whole bunch of people fighting and nobody, you know, nobody got hurt, no shooting. It wasn't none of that. It was more commotion than anything. People just, you know, trying to get to him on stage. So it wasn't a just a whole bunch of fighting. No, it wasn't none of that. Have you, you see the video. Have wasn't. you have you seen this kind of thing happen before? Never in my whole comedy career. That was your first time seeing Ever. it? Ever. Ever, but now, was I you did just it right? Yes, right before we did this set. How how long into his set before this happened? Maybe thirty minutes. He was already on stage. He had been on there already. He had been out there thirty minutes. Thirty when minutes this happened? before this happened. Thirty minutes, at least 30, 30 minutes, mm. at least. So I had left to sell my merchandise when he got on stage. Cause my wife was watching the show. I pulled her. I said, hey, come on, let's go. She was right there when it happened. I mean, not when it happened, right there where it happened. Where it happened. So when I pulled her, I said, come on, let's help me tell these shirts. He said, okay, I'll go because he ain't really, I'm not really into the show. Come on, let's go. We get to the hall, I mean, to the lobby area. I'm setting up my shirts. Matter of fact, I'm right next to his booth. He had all his merchandise. I'm setting up everything. Then I hear, oh, they fighting, they fighting. I'm like, what the hell? So I peep in there and I can see them trying to, on stage, trying to go. I said, what the hell going on? Never seen so it kind of cleared out. It didn't. It did, It just kind of went away. They, that whole thing happened maybe with thirty seconds. And they shut the whole place down. Everybody was leaving. No, it was just like automatic shutdown. Just people were just leaving because it's over. Yeah, because he was the last one performing. Right. We. So you I didn't see him no more. Who came got his merchandise? No, I don't know. You left. I left. You packed your stuff right then. I, I, literally, our hotel was like right across the street from the. Because we had a civic center. We had a nice little venue. Maybe twelve, thirteen hundred people. It was sold out. Mm. But they're there to see him. I get it. There was, you know, 
But he, to his defense, he said he's not a comedian. But that's the way he he he, now, he, he said he's not a comedian. He says that, right? I get it. Yeah, you're not a comedian, but respect the craft. You don't go out and cuss the man out. Do okay, you do all that, but comedy is but not. That's what he do on his on but his life. If you're gonna do, let's say you book him, don't book him for a comedy show. Well, what you booking him for? Talking shit. They say I'm doing a talking shit too. That and now people sense. know what they're getting. Versus I'm putting them with I'm putting them with all the different comedians. Now, I got a comedy crowd. I'm waiting to be So when they booked you, they didn't they told you you're gonna be with Charleston White. The promoter called me. I didn't at that time he didn't have Charleston White when he booked me. Okay. He didn't have. He said, I'm thinking about getting him. Whatever. So again, that's him. And I was like, oh, okay. I didn't know that he did comedy. Comedy. So I'm just like, I'm still like, okay, but I heard he was trying to get into it. The and comedy. doing it here and there. Well, he went with T.K. Kirk. Yeah, I was hearing, but still, I'm not that. really. He never hearing. seen his. Not really. Show. I didn't know. I'm just thinking. Okay, he popular. People know who he is. You know, he had on some points or whatever. You know, he be saying certain stuff. Whatever. Yeah, I'm I get out, it. I'm out there. This is what I did online. Exactly. We do all that. Telling you what yeah, he do. And I met him. I talked to him when I was down there. We talked shortly. Not nothing long. We just hey, what's up, dog? I'm going out. I told him, I said, you know, for work, I live in all the, was, we'll, you know, we'll get up, whatever. We never did, but. Yeah. So, my thing is, I ain't knocking the hustle. That's what you do. You getting paid. You don't yeah. knock nobody else. No, I see that. I ain't yeah. never knock the hustle. <laughs> do what you do. But at the same time, me being a comedian, as long as I've been doing comedy, I take this very serious. I don't think anybody can just come out here and do it. I made a post on Facebook saying, well, we make it look easy. But don't come to this craft because I'm supposed to be taking you away from your everyday hustle and bustle. Who's coming to see me? I'm delivering these jokes to entertain you. If I'm paid to see a guitar player, don't tell me you're not a guitar player. That's what I paid to see. And so he kept saying, I'm not a comedian. I'm not a comedian. I'm not. Well, So we're... that's part of his show. He keeps saying that on He's not there. a comedian, yeah. And to his defense, he's not. Mm -hmm. He's saying that. Y'all coming to see me. Y'all coming to see this is what I do. So they got agitated with him. He cussed him out. Hit him with, and that's that's what happened. Piper, but let me ask you this. Next show come up, you got a promoter, he call you, he booking you with Would Charleston you White. Will you be performing Absolutely. at that venue? Absolutely not. You wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't Why? Go? I'm, I want to be a part of a comedy show. Clowning and acting a fool is not, that's not comedy. Now, he, like I said, his defense, he'll say, hey, I'm not. Right, so, so he's, he's not booking bringing. For new, but right. talking shit, be shit So talking. he's not so-called bringing down the craft because he's saying outright that but you're I'm in not the a craft, comedy. But you're on, you're on my platform doing what you're doing, but you're not. It's almost like somebody said, I'm going to come do comedy, but I'm out here juggling. I'm doing something totally different than what I'm, I'm out here telling jokes. This is what I do. But if you're doing something different, then do that. That's, that's a talent show then. Nah, it's a talent show. It's not a comedy show. It's a variety show. That's fine. If you say it's a variety show, I'm good. We're going to have comedy. We're going to have shit talking. We're going to have people over fighting. We're going to have... But if I'm going to the Empire, what you going to the Empire for? Yeah, but, yeah, but but another thing, safety becomes an issue, too. Absolutely. If your wife is there... Absolutely. You don't know who coming and what they it's, coming it's for. Just a, what, it's what you bring, the energy that you bring and because what you're trying to do. I've been to a few comedy shows. They don't check you or nothing like no. that. No. Because that's not what is. What are we here for? We're here to have fun. We're here to... Laugh. We hear the, and at the end of the day, we done. But a lot of people say if somebody that he, heckling you, and you just, and it get to a point where it get out of hand. That's different. But did you hear that he was being heckled, or was it? They was booing him. He said, "I don't care about no boo." Look at this video. I, I seen the video. Him. They was booing because they wasn't liking what he was saying. And they was like, "We're not getting entertained." What are we? They was booing him because a lot of them coming out to see. Comedy. That's what I'm. My point. So I'm serious about this crap. If you're going to do that, don't bring it to comedy. Do it over there. You can do your own. Do, everybody got their own lane. That's your hustle. So just do what they call a talk shit show. But if everybody's coming to so-called see comedy, but they're coming to see him, they know what he does. You've never seen him online doing any comedy. comedy exactly. So, so I, I understand your point. So you make a valid they, point. Right. So why are they booing him for doing something that he always does? They, I guess they, they the expectations of him were different. That standard, they was thinking they was going to get something that they didn't ever, they, they never And got then it. You, you also, you start you would to assume see a mixed crowd of people too, because some of those people probably just going for comedy and get confused in the, in the mix and just, of it. And probably, and yeah, believe that, it or yeah. not, a lot of people yeah. didn't know who we were. Yeah. Just, I'm yeah, gonna go the older crowd that probably didn't know who we were. Day Damn night, folks. trying to get out. All of that. that was, and it was, they was in there. 
That little small town, they came to dress. It was supposed to be a Christmas party. If you look at the flyer. Comedy show slash Christmas party. After party, everybody was party at night. DJ, the venue was nice. They had alcohol. They had food. It was a nice, great night of, you know, nice event. That's all Got all messed up. Got it. I had packed pack of mine still, not one shirt. Wow. Messed and up that, the bag. Yeah, and that's how it happened. Messed up the bag. And that's how it happened. That's how any time it That's confusing. how it happened. So I'm just moving forward knowing, hey, man, this, you have to pick and choose what you do. Again, I got booked for that show. Didn't know how I was going to go as far as he was going to get Once it. Once you heard Charleston was going to be there, you didn't I didn't know. even, I didn't back out. I didn't say, well, because that never happened. Even when he him. didn't know. He never done nothing like that before. Even the, the little stuff he been going, he never done that before. Yeah. That never yeah. happened. If so his reputation was more him talking shit, but not reputation of him trying to. Do you think, because I believe that everybody on the internet, that's a win for Charleston. Absolutely. That, on the internet, that's a win. But what do you think about his shows now? Do you think there'll be peop, more people? People going to be reluctant to, to, to book him. People going to be more reluctant to even go. Like you say, your safety is hanging. Well, I don't know what he's going to do next. We unpredictable. Well, how, how we know what's going to happen? And most comedians who, might not want to go. I mean, how? how how I know who an audience. Because it looked like who want to get when the dude came up to the stage, he wasn't up on the stage yet. But before he, he could get up on the stage, he threw that thing at him. That is that a, I was I'm was, wondering, is that assault? He could have said yes. it wasn't. You yeah. see you what I'm saying? Because he didn't way. get up there until he was a, until the thing got through it. Exactly. Him. So what are you expecting him to do? What would you do? I mean, you defending. That's about to hit mm -hmm. you. What you going to do? How do you expect that to turn out? Wow, I never seen that like and that. And to me neither. I seen it that so, night. It got sent to me er, quick. Yes. Trill Talk, no pill talk, sent it to me. I was like, damn, what's going on? This is so real. thinking that, oh, he got whooping. Ain't nothing. He didn't. No, nah, I say it's real, him. though. Yeah. It ain't no fake. This is, they didn't yeah, stay. No, 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 no. That wasn't, <laughs> no. But nothing, nothing, I mean, nothing happened to him. He was, you know, he was fine. He got he his back in, him. he say. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he got his money. I mean, like I said, he knocked the hustle. That's all but he just, cared I'm about. Just, right, but I'm just about, I'm, 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 I'm more about. Comedy. my people comedy let's have a good time this is what I do we gonna laugh let's, you know but all the other stuff no man I, like no. I say man I, I, I'm i just glad you're okay yeah and everybody call me I got so many phone calls Piper you okay they ain't mad at me Damn, I ain't got no enemies out here I did my part I came and delivered gave them what they wanted I'm good so I'm, I, I appreciate all the calls I appreciate all the concern but Piper was good. You got to be careful on the you ride home. Be. Yeah, on that ride home, coming from down in that country, man. Man, look, I left the next morning by 8.30. <laughs> got out of there early. I ain't no eating breakfast. I knocked the egg out of my mouth. Let's, let's go. You ain't that hungry. We find something on 45. We, we can get out of here. But now, nah, all jokes aside, it, uh, it was a great show. I hate that. That took away from the show. Because now people ain't remember what, what, what Dead Piper did. Now, nah, that's all that trending. Not me and my, my boy. Mm -hmm. Shout out to my boy Gross Man down in Houston. He was a host. Great host. That's my boy. And we, we took it to the house. I mean, we gave them what they came for. Wow. And then now that happened. Now that wife, who going to mm -hmm. be talking about the show now? Mm -hmm. Saying, oh, man, I got what's going on. No, they're going to be talking. Uh, uh, Charleston going to do about 30 more podcasts. And that, all he, of that. He's going to go, and go live and he, he run his numbers up. And you don't deal with him no more? Nah. nah. <laughs> Check it, man. Nah. Hey, man, thank you for coming on the show, I man. I sure appreciate it. Appreciate you, man. Yeah, might have been in the building. I'm a but comedian. I knew. I knew I was gonna get him on there that night when I seen him on stage acting like an African. Mm -mm. Did you like that? I you loved like it. <laughs> your, accent, your African imitation is on yes, point. Yes, I, I do that. I do that joke sometimes, and people like it. But I, I don't put it on the stage all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Straight out of Louisiana, Baton Rouge. I like crawfish too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Piper. Hey, man, you're welcome, man. man. Boss Talk, man. 101. Boss Talk 101, man. I'm man. Thank, Thank you so much, man. Appreciate you, man. Boss Talk 101, what a boss is talk. And we out.